Welcome to this week's St. Clair County Board of Commissioners meeting. The types of business that occur at these meetings include public hearings, official voting on actions by the Board of Commissioners, presentations by departments of the county, and recognition of service that makes our county great. As your elected representatives, the St. Clair County Board of Commissioners is committed to improving the lives of all our residents while preparing county government to meet the demands of the future. In order to do that, we need to share our thoughts and plans with you. More importantly, we need you to share your thoughts, concerns, and opinions with us. We encourage you to come and experience the process by attending any of these meetings. They occur every first and third Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. at the St. Clair County Administration Building at 200 Grand River Avenue in Port Huron. I would like to call to order the uh, St. Clair County Board of Commissioners meeting. If uh, we could all stand and face the flag, please, for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, we'll take the roll, please. Commissioner McCown. Here. Commissioner Tamian. Here. Commissioner Heidemann. Here. Commissioner Riley. Here. Commissioner Rushing. Here. Commissioner Baum. Here. Chairman Greatop. Here. Any additions or changes to the agenda, please? Agenda item three, I'd like to add Medicare Advantage renewal. Okay, would you make that 7G then? Okay. 11. I'm sorry. 11G. 11 11G. 11 okay. 11K. Okay. K. Sorry, J -K. Okay. K. I was in the new business. All right, okay. we'll make that then. I will support that. Okay, I have a motion and a support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Approve the agenda. Support. Second. Motion and support to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, nobody opposed? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I would like to uh, make a motion to appoint Bill Graytop temporary chair for tonight. Support. I have a motion and two supports. Anybody? Or all in favor? Aye. 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 Is anybody opposed? <laughs> Me. Me. <laughs> I'm abstaining. <laughs> Five to one. You lose, sir. Five to one. You lose. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner Heidemann. I have uh, minutes for the previous meeting, uh, both A and B, Commissioner and Standing Committees. I make the motion um, that the minutes of the 7915 Commission, the 816, be approved and filed. Second. Motion to support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, no proclamations on the agenda. We have the consent agenda items A through F, uh, monthly summary on the budget, uh, June and July actuals, uh, notice of the license renewal requirements, manufactured homes, Enbridge project update for July, uh, EDA monthly update July, and the convention center construction update. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move to approve item 7A through 7F on the consent agenda. Support. I have a motion to support. Any discussion or anybody want to pull any of those out? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, report of standing and special committees. We'll start down at the end there with uh, nothing to report, Chairman. Thank you, sir. David? Uh, just one, and you were present at the IRA mm -hmm. library. We had the proclamation. That was uh, amazing. Uh, quite a family there. And uh, it was, that was. I was glad I was able to attend. It was pretty impressive. So, uh, Candace Miller was attendant. So, of course, uh, Bill Graytop. We had the township there and, and the families. Uh, if I can add to that, um, also uh, Senator Pablo was there and um, all the library people and the family that was there. Um, I would say, I don't know how many people, Dave. I believe 25 family members. Some of them flew in yeah. from California and Texas. Just for this uh, dedication and proclamation. Yeah, for the honor of their mom. Yeah, for the lady who was, who was uh, uh, named after. And they actually just about doubled the size, if I'm not mistaken, Allison. They just about doubled the size of the library in Ivory Township. So, super job. It looked really good. It was a very nice presentation. Nicely done. It was uh, well done. Thank you, David, for that report. Commissioner Riley, you have something? Yeah, I'd just like to mention the, uh, the 
the flow down we had on Sunday. I'd like to comment on that. Oh, I, yeah. uh, anybody who read it in the paper today, I think they'll get a good idea of what it what it costs to do that for the uh, police. I'm all in favor of things that help the the public, and definitely we're we're fortunate in this area to live on such a beautiful waterway. There's no question. But uh, I, I asked the the sheriff's department just for theirs because I didn't have time to ask everybody else. And I got the sheriff department, just the marine division. We were talking the vessels out there between 30 and 40 vessels, and we're looking at a, for the coast guard uh, to come up with a figure of roughly about ninety thousand dollars to run this. Uh, the sheriff department alone for the dive team and their guys, not counting Alkanak uh, responding up, not counting uh, the fire departments extra that brought in vessels uh, and manpower, the police department to do the shore. You know, we're looking at uh, roughly over ninety thousand dollars to run it. And you know, and I, I, I understand everybody wants to get in a waterway, and I don't agree with some of the articles in the paper saying that the. The, uh, one lady wrote in and said, well, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be free, it's going to be uh, uh, nice for the people to do, and it doesn't cost anything, etc., etc. Well, it does. It costs everybody in this room taxpayers' dollars to run something like that. And it's fine and dandy to enjoy the water, etc., but my concern is we're constantly looking at everybody's budgets. I mean, down here, Algonac, I'm sure, is looking at their budgets. The city of Port Huron, police departments, fire departments, the county budgets. Everybody looks at budgets and wants to hack because it's so tough today to operate. And to put on things like they did on uh, and to spend some $90,000 and, and the Coast Guard even handing out uh, life jackets to people that didn't have them after they were told to put them on before you enter the water that's pure stupidity in my opinion on those people and they should have said no you haven't got one on get out of the water and and we've just this thing is when i mean i'm all in favor of doing things in our area i'm all in favor of the waterways and helping people but my god when it's costing the taxpayers of st Clair county and this city and other townships and city that kind of dollars I got a serious problem with it. I think it's time that somebody steps up to the plate that's running that and says, okay, we got we got to compensate somehow the people that are involved, me and the police. And do we have other agencies, uh, maybe individuals that would step up to the plate and say, hey, I, I'd be happy to use my boat to, to do uh, not safety as a police officer and that, but at least to make sure they don't get blown to Sarnia. Uh, I just I thought it was very nice, we got it, but it's getting larger and larger and larger every year. And I don't know how we can handle that, the countywide, citywide, to to allow that to go on and just let it. And you can't stop it. I understand that, but somehow, who's ever running that has got to come up with some dollars to assist the agencies that are that are putting this on. I, mean, I don't see where we can put 35, 40 boats in the water and all the manpower, the bikes on the shore, and the police officers, and extra. And it just, when I read it, I knew it was going to be a problem, and I asked the sheriff department a week ago, I said, on Monday, I want to know how many dollars, and I got it, uh, 5200 just for them, and that's not counting any of the other agencies. So just to vent a little bit on it, I, I think it's something that we have to look at as a running tax dollars. Very good. Commissioner? Just on that, what about the Javi Nooner? You'd have the same situation there then, wouldn't you? Javi Nooner has become a very small thing according to this. Uh, but I mean, in both, either whether it's large or small, as soon as it becomes a formal organization, now you have liability issues and somebody that's running this. Because from my understanding, this is completely yep. word of mouth. You show up and if you want to float down, you do. As soon as you have somebody put on it, they will now have liability issues and in insurance. So if we, if we well, look into the cost, if somebody's going to be running this, um, so make sure we get our ducks in a row, maybe have our corporate counsel even build or get some thoughts on this because I well, think it's really tough to regulate it. It is. We it is tough. Cost. And if somebody said the other day, well, maybe you can tell them not to have beer. No, 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 you can't do that. You want to float down the river. I think it's wonderful. I think we have an absolutely gorgeous area, and I understand why they want to do it. But the, when you got to send that kind of manpower out to to make sure you know, everybody is okay. And and then that day, the way the wind was, you knew what was going to happen. 
So probably um, a suggestion. There's a local Mariners Coalition group that I go to every so often. It's not. It's um, something that um, Jim Atchison actually puts together. Um, Dave Brown, who runs both marinas, um, coordinates that. Uh, it's well represented from the. American side and the Canadian side. And the original intent was that was, of that was always to, after you know after 9/11, um, the there's a lot of issues getting boats back and forth. So they do meet a couple times a year, and all those different organizations are there. I would suggest to um, maybe go talk to that group, and and that that would be the place to be able to go and have everybody in, in the room and, and talk through this thing. So. I'll find out when the next uh, Mariners okay. Coalition is. And yeah, then. you know, I, I, it's not that I'm against people having the water and having the fun and everything, but I'm looking at it from a standpoint of the tax dollars that the people, everybody's trying to, like, I don't know, Algonac down here, I'm sure you got tighter budgets, et cetera, and you had people that assisted, et cetera. Somebody has to pay for all that, and I think down the line you have to say, okay, that's enough, we'll stop, let's we'll slow yeah, and down. that's the difference between a sanction, you know, because of, you guys know well where that I'm really involved in the offshore races in right. St. Clair, which is a sanctioned event, which we pull insurance, which we pay for the policing services. You know, we, the organization itself, right. um, um, handles all that. Um, to uh, a non-sanctioned event, you know, you could, 10,000 people show up tomorrow and it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a real slippery slope. Boy, and the thousands that were there this year. Let's, let's, wow. let's get in front of the Mariners Coalition group and Sounds talk good. a little bit about it. And uh, I'm sure there were some, some Commissioner Riley, anything else other than that one issue? No, sir. Very Thank good. you. Commissioner Heidemann? Uh, nothing tonight. Nothing tonight. Commissioner Tommy? <clears throat> I uh, have That's a long uh, list you've got there, sir. <laughs> well, I, I've t taken copious notes. When I go to these meetings to represent you, I want to make sure I get all the facts down. Go ahead. <laughs> Though I wasn't involved in this to begin with, but you know, you've put me on the board and <laughs> I'm trying to get it all straightened out. But um, about three years ago, uh, the county commission entered into an agreement with, um, which is for the I-69 corridor. And in that uh, initial agreement, there were four counties, uh, St. Clair, Lapeer, Genesee, and Chiawassee. And subsequent to our uh, entering into the agreement with uh, those counties, the governor came out with his regional prosperity initiative. And, and as a consequence of that, that same body uh, has a related organization that includes the rest of the thumb being Huron, Tuscola, and Sanilac County for purposes of economic de development grants. And uh, in the presentation that we received at our last meeting, we learned that the state of Michigan actually thinks that this coalition is the most successful one that they have in the state. And uh, in our county, uh, not only is the county a member, but we have several other municipalities that have participated on a regular basis, including the city of St. Clair, Kimball Township, St. Clair Township, and the city of Port Huron. And we took initial action to start the process again to come up with another uh, three-year agreement, uh, probably according to the same terms that we initially had. And in the thinking of the, of the uh, corporation at this point is, is to keep it as um, an I-69 corridor committee with, with the original four counties, but we'd still probably have an operating agreement with the rest of the rest of the thumb. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention because we'll be hearing more about that and probably get, get some official correspondence about uh, the... Uh, How did they determine that we're one of the more successful <coughs> ones? What kind of a criteria were they using for that? Do you know, Carl? Well, um, Actually, it's the degree of cooperation that there's been between the various counties. Uh, we, uh, we got the first project, um, uh, was in Chiawasa County. We helped finance a water, water line between the city and the township. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we've just been, we, we uh, put together our uh, um, EDA plan. What, what's that called, Bill? The, uh, the, 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 the SEDS plan. Remember, we had quite an extensive presentation at one of our previous meetings about that. 
and uh, the fact that we've added these other three counties for purposes of economic development, they, they look at that as, as being the best example in the state. Now, maybe that doesn't speak too well for the program, but uh, our, Howard, Howard's our other yeah. uh, delegate to the, <coughs> to the commission, and our, our meetings, uh, there's been very little acrimony. Wouldn't you agree, Howard? Yeah, absolutely. And, and then uh, we've also had a number of uh, economic developments spinning off. Uh, I don't believe we've had any in St. Clair County. I think they've had a couple already in uh, Lapeer and uh, uh, Flint. So well, we actually um, we took the preliminary steps to assist Kimball Township, and that's still out there, you know, um, with adding you know an industrial park for St. Clair County. But they they've decided to uh, participate in a different state incentive program at this time. But um, without uh, w we do have some tools that are available through the next Michigan Development Corporation to help grow employment that we wouldn't have if, if we weren't participating in an agency like that. Commissioner Bowen, you had something? Uh, question. Originally, there were, they had five designations um, available through the state. One they had um, for the UP, one was uh, Airtropolis, and, and, and just going back how we applied, and that was the reason for the collaboration amongst the rest of them because we felt better that you know we would have it. Have they expanded that number? Do you know, Carl? I, I don't. I don't think that they have. I mean, okay. while I've been sitting on the board, I haven't heard any, anything okay. more about Didn't, that. Uh, Traverse City get one, and Grand was Grand Rapids the other one, and I thought there was five originally. UP. Maybe there was, I don't think there was more than six, but I know. I, I know we have five. one. It was because of the whole regional planning. They're going to fund different initiatives, those types of things. And I was just curious if they had expanded that. I, I think the only the only issue that we've talked about as a commission <coughs> with our staff is the fact that um, we entered into this next Michigan development agreement with these four counties before the governor came along with the regional prosperity right. initiative. And uh, even though we've expressed willingness to cooperate with the governor's regional prosperity initiative, at one point he was talking about uh, forcing us to leave SEMCOG. And, uh, I think it's been a consensus of, of this board that if we have to choose one between Next Michigan and SEMCOG, our interests are more aligned with SEMCOG. <coughs> the governor's um, justification for this program is supposedly economics, but after they set up our district and they did a study, they found out that we really don't have very strong economic linkages between St. Clair County and, say, Genesee County compared to what we have with, with, with Macomb County. We have a lot more people who travel from St. Clair County to Macomb County for employment than we have going to the other three counties, uh, Shiawassee, Genesee, and Lapeer combined. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost ridiculous. But that, that aside, right now they, they appear to be uh, willing to let us participate in, in both groups, which I think is, is advantageous to us. Very good. Yes, I, I, that's a, a point I'd like to emphasize, you know. If this is an opportunity for us to uh, develop uh, economic alliances going west down the 69 corridor and then keep the economic alliances going down the I-94 corridor, it's a win-win for St. Clair County. And one of the, one of the most interesting um, initiatives that uh, Next Michigan has been involved in is we've become a formal member of the United States I-69 committee. There's a, a series of states from Michigan through Indiana, Tennessee, all the way through Texas where an I-69 corridor has been developed. We're the only state that has the, a finished freeway through the entire state. You know, you can come, you can, you can get on 69 right here at the bridge in Port Huron and go all the way down to Indiana. The other states have only got portions of the proposed 69 uh, freeway but um, connecting, you know, Mexico with Canada through the United States, uh, it, 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 it would provide, you know, substantial transportation infrastructure that would be beneficial to, to our employers. Have they started paving that to make it 10 lanes yet, Carl, do you know? 
Chinese. Where are we selling it to Chinese? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I was on the commission at that time. Commissioner McConnell. We had a room full of them. Uh, uh, we can't take a pass. <laughs> yeah. I, I am going to take a pass tonight. I have nothing to report. Uh, citizens wishing to address the board. I have uh, two citizens. Uh, Harold Taberzi uh, would like to address us regarding the St. Clair County Library position. Harold, if you would take the podium, please. Yes, sir. Give us uh, your name for the record and then uh, go ahead and address us. Oh, uh, my name. Yes, we have, I'm sorry, we have a three minute time limit. Harold is our. Um, I mean, Howard is our. Is this, our is, this is Howard. <laughs> this is Howard and this is Harold. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Harold Clifford Terzi, and I'm currently the uh, trustee for St. Clair County Library Board for District 5. And my term, I've been on, on the library board for five years. And I've enjoyed working on the library board. I just wanted to give you a little. My background, you probably read it. If you haven't, you can pull it up. Um, I'm a retired uh, Ford engineer. I worked as a public school teacher for a number of years before I went to Ford. So I think I've got the background to work as a for the next five years as a trustee, and I, I would like you to consider putting me on again for the next five years. I'm not that old; I like to move over the hill, but I just come up to the top. I tell you. But I enjoy working with the library board, and uh, I think I can help the library board because I do represent the area of Ira, um, Marine City, and I, I live in Casco. I've been there for 28 years. My wife and I have been there for 46 years. We've been out there for 28 years, and. Uh, I think I could I could help the people, and I do represent my neighbors, and that's why I'm here to speak for my neighbors and for myself. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, to address the board, uh, Shar Stanulis regarding library trustee appointment. State your name for the record. Please. Yes. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Charlotte Stanulis, and as Bill said, I am applying for the position of the St. Clair County Library Board of Trustees. And I have uh, applied because libraries have been important to me all of my life. As a child, access to the books was the draw. As a teacher, I saw the importance of the library to my students, who might not have had access to reference materials and computers at home, but who could get this access at our county library's local branches. As a community member, I appreciate the opportunity the library offers to people of all walks of life to enjoy hard copy and electronic books, music and movies, and to receive training in computer skills, and to have a place to use those skills and programs, both for pleasure and for bettering their opportunities. Whether it's completing college applications, applications for various services, or for uh, completing job applications and searching jobs. Uh, many people use the computers and programs for personal enrichment as well, such as genealogy services. The library offers a social outlet, a place for tutors to work with students in a public meeting space. It offers lessons in everything from knitting to financial planning. At the Algonac Clay Branch, you can even check out a fishing pole and fish in the stream beside the library. I want to give back to the library system, which has benefited me and my community so completely, by serving on the Board of Trustees to assure that these wonderful and very necessary services at our libraries continue to grow for all of us in St. Clair County. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Any other citizens uh, <coughs> wishing to address the Board tonight? If not, then uh, we have no unfinished business. I'd like to take a moment and uh, first off thank the City of Elvinac for hosting the uh, St. Clair County Board of Commissioners meeting tonight. Uh, we do this about four times a year. We move out into the communities and it gives the local community an opportunity to see us in action. Uh, not that we're the model that you need to follow, but it's see, to see how your county operates, how your government, your county government works. Uh, take this opportunity also to introduce a few of the people that are here from the Elvinac Council. First off, uh, Irene Bird is the mayor. Irene, thank you very much for hosting us here. Uh, Joe Nugent sitting over here. Joe, raise your hand so we know who you are. Uh, Joe has been on the council in the past. He was off. He's back on the council again and doing his things. And Michael Bembus. Mike, where's, raise your hand. Uh, Michael is also on the city council. Uh, these people are all involved in their community. Joe and Michael are both in the Lions. Irene, I couldn't tell you how many things Irene as the mayor does for this particular community. She just has been around for all of She worked in the schools, graduated from the schools, um, retired from the schools, uh, serves her community very well. So 
uh, compliments to you guys, and, and thank you for having us here. Very good. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Michael Bembis also serves on our Parks and Recreation Commission for the county. He was recently appointed by this particular board and serves on that, uh, on that in that capacity. So thank you, Michael, for doing that. Thank you, Art. <laughs> All right, let's move into new business. Uh, just a kind of a preface real quick here. Uh, you're going to find us going through these agenda items rather quickly, and you might think that uh, we're not doing our due diligence. That is far from the case because we work on a lot of this stuff behind the scenes. We have four different committees. Everything that's on here has passed through one of the committees at some point along the lines, and we have worked diligently to make sure that everything is up to speed. Uh, the final action, though, is to take it to the full board most of the stuff is pretty well set to go. So if we move through it quickly, that's the reason that we're doing it that way. All right, uh, item A, uh, approval of county disbursements for June and July two 2015. At this time, I'd like to move to approve the county disbursements for June 2015 in the amount of $9,608,291.62 and for July 2015 in the amount of $10,701,551.51. Support. Okay, I have a motion to support. Any uh, questions or discussions about those items? Hearing none, roll call please. Commissioner Tamian. Yes. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Commissioner Bone. Yes. Commissioner Rushing. Yes. Commissioner Heideman. Yes. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Chairman Greta. Yes. Uh, item 11B is the Library Ancestry Database three year renewal. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. I move that the Commission approve the library subscription with ProQuest LLC for the Ancestry database <coughs> for a three-year term in the amount of $14,813. Second. Okay, I have a motion to support. Uh, if there are any questions or anything, I see uh, Allison is in the audience. If anybody has any questions or anything else? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, let's do a roll call on this. Let's get some money in it. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Commissioner Heidemann. Yes. Commissioner Tanyan. Yes. Commissioner Rushing. Yes. Commissioner Bone. Yes. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Commissioner Greytop. Yes. Item C, the Library Times Herald database three year renewal. Mr. Chair, I would uh, move the approval of the agreement with ProQuest LLC for the subscription to the Port Huron Times Herald database for a three year term in the amount of $16,832. Support. A motion to support. Any questions on this? Again, uh, library people are in the audience. All right. Roll call. I mean, uh, yeah, roll call vote on it then. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Commissioner Bohm. Yes. Commissioner Tamian. Yes. Commissioner Heideman. Yes. Commissioner Rushy. Yes. Chairman Greytop. Yes. Uh, item D, a library board appointment. Okay, you have in front of you um, a ballot that has been prepared by the clerk. Uh, Harold Taberzi's name is on there. Charlotte <coughs> Stanielis's name is on there. You heard from both those citizens tonight. If you would please mark your ballots and then send those down toward Commissioner Bowman. Uh, we're going to the clerk for counting. Close nominations. I have to make the motion and close Support. nominations. Support. Okay, I have a motion to close nominations and support it. Any, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. So, Mr. Clerk, will you uh, have them all? Give us the results, sir. Uh, one for Staniels. One for Tiberzi. One for Staniels. Stanulus. Mr. Stanulus. Mr. Stanulus. Mr. Stanulus. Six one Stanulus. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Charlotte. Thank you very much, uh, Allison. Will you uh, get in touch with Charlotte, please? And uh, Harold, I want to thank you very much for your for your time on the board. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you also. All right, uh, let's move on then to, uh, do we need a motion? We don't need a motion, do we? No. Really. Okay, all right. Uh, let's move on to item E then, the fiscal year 2015 emergency management performance grant agreement. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, the county commission approve the fiscal year 2015 emergency management performance grant 
in the amount of forty thousand fifty seven dollars support a motion to support uh, any discussion or any questions about this particular grant it is by the way uh, no match required it's 100 percent federal funds <coughs> I don't think we need a roll call on this, do we? It's no, we don't. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? But motion carries. Item F, 2000 uh, fiscal year 2016 community corrections plan. Mr. Chairman, I'd move to uh, approve the uh, for year 2016 community correction plan and grant application amount of 305,142. Support. Okay, I have a motion and support. Um, and if you notice there were two separate numbers in there you add those two together and you should come up with the number that uh, that we just read out loud there so uh, any questions from anybody again i believe this is uh this is part of the rsat thing so um i don't see a match on there anywhere so we're not spending money all in favor of that grant aye aye, aye. aye. anybody opposed <clears throat> motion carries item g law enforcement services agreement with the city of elgin Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the Law Enforcement Services Agreement with the City of Algonac for a term of 10-1-15 through 9-30-18 in a total amount of $2,026,136. Second. I have a motion and three supports, so <laughs> Jay picked the one. Favorite. And uh, any discussion? Commissioner Would Rushing. you uh, give a rundown on that? Commissioner yeah. Area, please. Um, it, um, it started, uh, this is, uh, they're in their fourth year now. They did three years ago. They started and they did three year. They did a three year term. Carl, you were just leaving, I believe, when uh, this piece came into be, uh, and it was an effort to save the money from, to save the city some money, and on the, to the benefit of the city council. The sheriff called me and he said, "What do I need to do to get this contract?" I said, "You need to do two things. One, you have to save everybody's job that is working there right now." hire them and two you need to save them some money and that was the council's request and the sheriff did exactly that there were six full-time officers they offered six full-time officers a job five accepted the job and are currently working there are extremely happy I've talked to all five of them uh, they saved the city upwards of two hundred thousand dollars roughly I'm using some round numbers now so over the term of that one contract they saved about six hundred thousand dollars for the city of Algonac uh, with this new contract, again, you're going to be saving in the neighborhood of $600,000 again, so roughly $1.2 million will have been saved over the life of these two contracts. I have talked to the mayor, I've talked to Michael Bembus, I've talked to Joe Nugent, and I've talked to some other people on the council, and my understanding is that everybody is very pleased with the sheriff and what they are doing. I will say as a member of the Algonac Lions Club, when we put on the pickerel tournament, we are very pleased with the sheriff. He sends his dive team down here when we have our kids fishing contest, he sends his uh, boats down here for uh, support for our water events that we do and we do two or three of those he puts people on patrol he puts them walking he has them on bicycles he gets other communities to come in here uh, and uh, it's just been it's been working out great if Joe or Irene or Michael if I'm not saying this the correct way shake your head that's perfect Thank you. okay and yeah we so all it, are pleased but um, I think the one thing that we probably left out is the reason we did this is because we were minus a police chief at the time. That so is that's correct, and that is that is Sheriff Donilon's plan all along. Is right. he will he not come in and do this? Uh, he was asked to bid it at some other point. I think maybe Carl, you may have even asked him if he would do it. I'm not sure, but he doesn't do that. If you don't have a police chief, then he'll come in and do it. And you're correct for saying it that way. Thank you. Any other questions or discussions on the on the commissioner? Yeah, you, just a comment. <laughs> uh, uh, the, they, the members of the board. Uh, uh, Algonac can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can kind of tailor make your agreement when you want to service, how many hours of service. Uh, you can kind of uh, tailor make that with uh, the sheriff, and he will work with you uh, so you get the kind of police coverage you need in your community. I think that's a very important point to make. It's not that once you enter into an agreement with the sheriff, the sheriff's dictating the services that you're getting. It's really a services a la carte. It is. That, that, yep. right. that the council has a opportunity to choose what configuration of services and the sheriff provides them with different alternatives and different costs. Yep. I'm glad to see that it's worked out so well. There were, uh, the Alvinac requested 30 hours of coverage. That would be one man 24 hours a day and then six additional hours per day. And those six hours are placed 
where service is most needed. So that's what's been happening. Anything else? Just Commissioner? 20 second here. I believe that the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the services have expanded, and I believe, not nothing against your police department, but the sheriff has more tools to use to give you the service, and apparently exactly. you're very happy with them. So he has the uh, facilities and the work for to, to give you more service if needed. He can have a lot stronger police force down here rather than what you had before. So it's uh, been a great partnership between the city of Algonac and the county. Thank you, Commissioner Russian. Anything else? <coughs> All right, all in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Very good, thank you. Item H, the airport accounts receivable write-offs. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. <coughs> I would uh, move <coughs> to uh, approve the airport accounts receivable write-off in the amount of $25,336.69. Support. I have a motion and a support. Any discussion? Some of these things go back as far as 2009, so I guess it was time to clean up the books. Um, any other notes, thoughts, discussions anywhere? Uh, do we need a motion? Uh, all right, let's do a roll call on this. We're giving up some money here. Commissioner Tommy? Yes. Commissioner Bohm? Yes. Commissioner McConnell? Yes. Commissioner Rushy? Yes. Commissioner Heideman? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Uh, Chairman Greatop? Yes. Uh, item I is the landfill accounts receivable write-offs. This time I'd like to move to approve the landfill accounts receivable write-off in the amount of $174,518.44. Support. Okay, I have a motion to support. Any discussion on this? Commissioner Heidemann. As you know, I really get heartburn over this one because uh, what what has transpired, and this is about the third time and since I've been on the board I, I'm thinking we've we've had to write off up to a half million dollars 300 180 and then 174 and and like I said I I after we discussed this at committee uh, I went home and I I called uh, our, our administrator and I said you know maybe there's a way we can deal with this because what happens is the community signed a contract with a waste hauler and that waste hauler then uh, takes uh, the waste material to the landfill and they're supposed to pay for the tonnage of waste that goes to the landfill. Well, in the cases that we've had in the past, these firms go belly up, they go into bankruptcy, and, and they don't pay the bill. And yet, you know, we've accepted all of these communities' waste and we get no money for it at all and then they refile under a new name and they're back hauling garbage and uh, I, I suggested that the first time that one of these haulers is delinquent uh, that maybe a solution is to have our, la our landfill director obviously notify the community that the haulers from and say this bill has to be cleaned up or you know we're going to bill you directly uh, because you know uh, I, I guess you know stiffing us for five hundred thousand dollars we could give every employee in the county a two percent raise roughly with that kind of money well and what we've always done with our landfill money because I don't want to, we don't co-mingle the funds our landfill funds have always went into our road match program which is 900000 now. We do not take money from our landfill and put it into general fund to pay for wages. So if you, if you look at where No, I money, just... I, but, you, you're too, but I'm just saying, because yeah. the, the people, you know, what's this, Marysville, I don't care, the county, you know, you guys lost, lost the money. But the, the point being is the monies that our landfill <coughs> generates, what we do with our money is we put it back into those particular programs you know right. so that's that's and, and 300 we, 180 and 175 less that we ha have had to put back into the road program and that that's back so that's when we had the road program down to about a half million dollars or 500 million uh, 500,000 we could have you know added that to the road program and I think Dave you mentioned it a number of times how important that was how 
in your community. Commissioner Rushing? Yeah, back to where you can't commingle them when he makes reference. I want it to be there's no mistaking that we could not use that money, and I think that's the point your money making for any raises. We couldn't do that. We also use the money to support the airport. Uh, in addition to that, as this has come forward, we have been working with other partners, and Jeff's been great with this, and our landfill and all the county commissioners. Uh, we are now contracting with some of the communities, and uh, we're actually going to have, Riley Township has requested to have their township meeting in October at the landfill. They are going to be looking to con potentially contract with the county. So all they'll be paying for is a trash service or the uh, landfill, whoever the uh, garbage collectors are. It's for the trucking service only. The actual billing will go to the township, and then they'll cover the cost to the county. And that's been saving, and Jeff can give you more specific uh, Figures. I believe the first year was around fifteen thousand for Cotterville. They were the first target program. It's not be eighteen. I just talked to them. It's roughly ten percent we've seen in the communities. The city of Marysville is like ninety thousand on their trash bill. I mean, it's a service that we offer up. <coughs> Our consultants um, write the specs. They handle everything for the city, the township. Um, you just have to essentially go to the go through the bid process. So currently, we have four people that have taken advantage of this, and we've seen at least 10 percent reductions in, in the trash. Um, City of Marysville is obviously a big number because they spent over $600,000, um, closer to $700,000 a year, and they were somewhere in the $90,000 neighborhood savings just by going to the direct billing piece of it. So, by, by doing that, what happens is the individual townships or the cities, 31 municipalities within the county, they get rid of the middleman. The actual revenues that's being generated at the landfill, the tipping fees are the same. What's happening is now that they don't have to cover the cost, generally I'm going to say 20 to 30 percent what the uh, haulers have been doing is putting that, because they don't know exact tonnage that's going to be coming in. So they're going to have to overbid that to make sure they get their cost. Because once you lock in a contract, being a previous supervisor and what we did in Riley Township, it's uh, near $200,000 for the contract annually. And they have to lock into that. So they get the money whether they have the tonnage or not. And they have to cover there. That's just doing good business. So now a lot of the communities are hauling just for the hauling service itself. And the townships are seeing, or any municipality is seeing, about a 10% bonus, which they can use in their general fund for whatever they use. Thank you. I, I guess, um, I, I'm sorry I, I uh, missed the committee meeting where this is discussed. But I guess the point I would make is that there is a cost. I mean, to you know, we set goals in our budget for how much revenue we need, and if we don't reach that amount, we have to recover it someplace else. And where we where we recover it is from the other customers. You know, if we, if we and so to the extent that we're losing that revenue, we have to boost our rates to replace that revenue, and so there. I'm hoping that we can find some way. I, I think the best program, not just for us in terms of the write-offs, is the direct billing with our communities because it, it saves them money, saves us money, and, and uh, then all they have to do is uh, take a look at their own trucking costs. But th th there's, there has to be a way to um, limit our, our losses with these these people. I mean, if they're if they're not um, going to pay their bills, we need to take some sort of action. Whether it's cutting off, I'm not really sure what the what the best best solution to that. But I, I think that's something our our administrative staff should take a look at and see if they can come up with a recommendation. Yeah, I'm going to say let's say thank you, thank you, Gary Fletcher, Carrie Bill, Hample, we'll sit down. What options do we really have here? How much? I, I, and to be quite honest, this goes back to the 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They had actually paid us, but when they filed bankruptcy, your bankruptcy, you can you go back. They backdated it. Then. You go backdate it at that time. So we were we were we were getting paid. Correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie. We had to pay this back in the <coughs> bankruptcy court ruling. I'd forgotten that. Against us. I, yeah, I think that was a substantial number, so, too, if I remember right, that we had to pay back. I think it was close to 100000 give or take. It was a big number that we had to pay back. That's what we're talking about. Right? After this, yes. Yeah. And then that money went into the full pot that got distributed among all of the yeah. I, I, I think that's a very good point, and, and perhaps you've already done this, but I, I think for our own peace of mind, we should 
take a look at that again. I mean, given those circumstances here, they did pay us, but then the bankruptcy trustee turned around and said, well, the, I'm yeah. setting the bankruptcy date retrospectively. You have to pay him back the money he paid you. And that's after how he stiffed that, us. Yeah, after he stiffed us. Like I said, there should be some way to get around that. But <laughs> I'm not smart enough to tell you what it is. Yeah. All right. Any, discuss? Any other discussion? Good, good discussion, gentlemen. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Rushing. Yes. Commissioner Heideman. Yes. Commissioner McConnell. Yes. Commissioner Bohm. Yes. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Commissioner Tamian. Yes. Chairman Great Top. Yes. Item J, Public Guardian Reorganization. Mr. Chair, I move the approval of the Manning Table Revision requested for Probate Court Public Guardian's Office by eliminating two part-time case manager positions, adding one full-time assistant public guardian position, and adjusting the wage scale and job description for the public guardian position. Support. I have a motion to support. Any discussion? We've already had a presentation from Mike on this, so uh, if there are no questions or discussions, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Item K that we added to the agenda was the Medicare Advantage Renewal. You received it electronically today or yesterday via email. Yeah. Uh, there were quite a few documents uh, that we had to go through. And uh, am, am I to understand that this is for final action? Does anybody? It's not final action? No. Well, does, I guess we could discuss it. I want to give a little bit of history on okay. this, just kind of. Um, Where's it going to go from here then to the next? September 3rd, the, the committee meeting will have final action there. Our um, health care consultant there to right. speak with you and answer any questions. All right, so our motion tonight will be to send it to the committee level. Well, let's start with the uh, four. I'll make a motion to have this go to the final, to the board at, on the September 3rd meeting. Okay, I have a motion. Support and support. Okay. Yeah, Mr. just, just, uh, just a little history lesson on this for, for some of you. Um, roughly five years ago, we had our uh, actuarials come in, and, and our health care fund was, was, not, was not in good shape. It was got five to seven years at the current pace that you're going at and essentially your retiree health care is going to be broke or close to broke. So we put a work group together at the time. We had um, a group of um, well, the county um, um, county general employees, community mental health, along with road commission. We are all part of our um, you know, retirement health system along with the medical piece. And then we had uh, representation from the retirement system um, you know, a lot of people that were for change, a lot of people that uh, uh, weren't for change. So we put this work group together and we, we, we talked about a lot, a lot of different issues. But one of the big things we did at the time, if you look here for the post 65, um, the county used to be the first payor, for example, on that, and then the Medicare would pick it up after that, okay? We just made the change um, to that, which the county became the secondary and um, Medicare became the primary. Carrie, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm speaking out of text here on this. Just that savings alone didn't even change any coverage. Just by changing that saved us over $800,000 a year in the first year just by by making those particular changes. We had our we had our health care folks, uh, Plant Moran, to help us through it. We had some other, you know, obviously outside help on this. And, so when you talk about the post-medical retiree and you look at the increases now, roughly 10%, uh, you know, it's pretty well been, or it's been tracking for the last however many years. We did re we did see a substantial savings because we did change some deductibles and some co-pays um, back um, roughly four years ago. If you look in here too, it talks about hardship and non-hardship. We used to have a policy in place at the county if you collected a pension, from the county of X amount of dollars, you would ultimately receive a hardship. Didn't have anything to do with your average household income. As I've always told the story, I know two millionaires that were on a hardship clause <laughs> for the county. It wasn't, it wasn't right. So we had actually changed it to your average household income. You have to bring your tax forms in. We were over 100 plus carry that were collecting on hardship. And I think we're down to like 18 now, somewhere in there. I know it's under 20 is the number that actually are true hardships. So when you look at this and you talk about what is a hardship, 
what is a non-hardship, those are those are the criteria um, for that. And um, this sheet shows two hardship. Two, yeah, I, I two and one earlier and today, the that, like ten. that was one of my questions, and I believe there was ten that yeah, was ten. related to me, so we're down to ten. Ten, okay. So, but that's just so when you look at what a hardship and what a non-hardship um, is, and what the criteria and the reasons, we, and the changes that we made, you know, four years ago, because a couple of years went around. So, that's kind of my little schmeal on just some of the stuff. You're good, thank you. Anybody else? Commissioner Hardin. Well, uh, go, going over this history, backing up just a little more, um, what was it, 10 years ago or so that the feds uh, requested that we had to separate or mandated that we had to separate our pension fund from our benefit fund? The pension fund, we have to deliver on the, the promise there, how much you're going to get monthly. Uh, the benefit fund is flexible. And if we didn't make the changes that Commissioner Bone talked about, uh, we could have just basically erase completely any benefit for health care. And uh, I think Commissioner Bowen was pretty adamant that under no circumstances do we want to go back on that promise uh, to our retirees. And so we went to our retirees and um, explained to them the, the situation and the kinds of changes we'd have to make so that future retirees uh, could depend on having a, a benefit there. Uh, so anyway, I'd like to commend uh, Commissioner Bowen because he he picked that up and ran with it and and uh, made the kinds of changes. He was the first one to talk about the EGWIC program, which was uh, part of the uh, opportunity to put him in the Medicare Advantage, our retirees, and make that program available, and then at the same time save uh, the funding uh, from the uh, the retirement fund for health care benefits. And so it was definitely a win-win. It, it pushed it up. Uh, Jeff, how far did we push it up from, what, six years to 10 or 12? Yeah, depending it, depending on if you oh. get, you know, like 1% growth. I think it's 11 years. If you get 7%, 10%, 16 We're still not out of the, you know, the woods, so to speak. But you know, a lot of the discussion, too, was to see what affordable health care, some of these other changes, how it was going to affect. We're still in that. I'm not going to say we're not going to have to address it and make some additional changes down the road, but it gave us some breathing room because I turned the clock back five years ago. It was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't good. And um, so, like anything, we'll have to, I'm sure we'll have to, to uh, readdress it and get out in front of it. Again, to my point is we have our actuarial report coming up September 15th, if I'm not mistaken, at 10 a.m., um, I suggest everybody attend that. They're going to be in to make their presentation, so we'll give an uh, idea of where we're at. Because that essentially is what drives us to make the decisions. You know, and I've been to four retiree luncheons, talked to them, and trust me, it's darn near a public lynching when you go in there. But they do appreciate <laughs> you standing in front of them and giving them the information and the facts and figures and, the, and why you know why you why you think it's uh, uh, Commissioner, just, just a quick question. Uh, for any municipality, and we have 31 St. Clair County, uh, <coughs> the large ones do provide some health care for the retirees and their current employees. There are specific requirements, government guidelines, on how you can take care of that money. You can't just go and invest it on something on, uh, to get a huge return. So we have specific guidelines for that. And I just want to mention again with Jeff Bohm, when we went to the retirees, mostly he did because he uh, fronted this thing. But the retirees initially, you know, they're you get some, you're going to take my health care away or, you know, make them take a bigger hit. But for the most part, you'll always have the exception, but for the most part, something's better than nothing. They still have very good health care, and they knew that if we didn't do something, it would be gone with Jeff's efforts and taking care of the lead on this. And, of course, uh, all the commissioners and all the retirees, everybody that worked on this, they said, we need to have this continue, and they're working to make this expand and continue to go on. So nobody's without any health care, and that's a big plus for Jeff for taking the lead on that. Anything else? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. That'll go on to the next meeting. Uh, administrator's report. And before uh, Mr. Kaufman gives that report, I would like to introduce uh, so that our audience knows that uh, 
Bill Kaufman is our county administrator. He's the head man in charge of uh, most everything that happens up there and uh, takes his orders from us, but uh, really sends us a lot of good knowledge and kind of guides us along the way in many ways. And Carrie Hepting sitting next to him. Carrie, would you kind of do that a little bit? Is our <laughs> She's in uh, our director of finance and does an excellent job for us there too. So we get to meet a couple of our people here. So Bill, would you give us the administrator's report, please? Sure. And I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, staff is uh, preparing a report that we'll be sending to the board regarding our um, public safety radio system. Um, as some of you realize, there are some of the radios that we're using that will be obsolete in a couple of years. Also, some of the funding that we receive from the state of Michigan through the form of some credits towards our um, membership fees and subscription fees through the state uh, radio system will be drying up in the coming years. So um, we're putting the, that information together to let you know what the operational impact of the changes will be, what the financial impact will be, and some of the alternative solutions that staff continues to explore. So um, you can look for that in the next couple of weeks, that report. Um, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., I know several of you will be attending a meeting at the county's landfill. The, the DEQ Solid Waste and Sustainability Work Group, they're the group that puts together all the uh, guidelines and thoughts for new legislation and administrative rules for running landfills, operating landfills, for dealing with coal, fly ash, compost as well. Um, they will be meeting out at the St. Clair County landfill to get an idea of um, what our operation is all about. Um, that meeting is, um, we can largely thank the DEQ staff for insisting that that work group come out. You know, we've been talking with them for a number of years to get them to make some changes to their rules so programs like the bioreactor system would become an accepted um, technology that um, they would allow throughout the state and the EPA the same throughout the United States. So this will be the first opportunity for most of the members of that work group, and there'll be 21 folks that will be here tomorrow, it'll be the first opportunity they've had to actually see our facility and learn how it works. So they'll be conducting their regular monthly meeting, but then there will be an opportunity for Chairperson Bohm and Commissioner Heidem to make us a, uh, a presentation along with um, the landfill director, Matt Williams, he'll be giving a presentation as well. Our consultant, CTI, will be there to answer any technical questions that they may have. So, um, if you are available, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning out at the landfill. Um, the um, Commissioner Bohm did mention that on September 15th at 10 a.m., the Pension Board has scheduled a special meeting. They've um, sent out invitations to you today, 10 a.m., September 15th, um, at the uh, County Board offices. Nyhart will be making their presentation report on the findings for the, their uh, uh, actuarial study for both the Pension Fund as well as the Health Care Fund. At that time, they'll also advise the Board and staff on what they feel needs to be set aside to fund the program in 2016. So that's something we always look forward to because it assists us in developing the budget. The, the uh, Community Mental Health will be there and the Road Commission will be there as well. The annual meeting, uh, EDA annual meeting this year will be a dinner meeting. It is set for September the 8th. It again will be in the evening. The agenda as well as the details have yet to be um, shared with us. As soon as we get them, we will make sure that they are sent on to you. So if you are interested in attending, please mark your calendar for September 8th. Give us an idea if you would like us to make a reservation for you as well. The um, convention center, um, we're kind of winding down on reports on the convention center construction. You do receive in your agenda packet every month a copy of their um, the construction um, report financial statement as well as within your disbursements or your financial monthly financial reports you receive from SMG.
copy of everything that's going on there, their income statement, and, um, income as well as expenditures. So please make sure you take a look at those. If you have any questions, uh, I think your first point of contact will be, will be uh, Carrie, and then we will put you in touch with the SMG as well. Right now, we, we did just this week, we signed what's called our Certificate of Substantial Completion. What that really does is it sets the date for the warranty to begin on all the work that the contractors have done for us. So that date has been set. It's an important date for us as well as for our contractors and our engineers. Uh, and it was um, somewhat of a milestone, even though it's just a bureaucratic milestone that was important to all of us. Bill, before you go any further, is the uh, the punch list all complete? No, there are just a couple of items left on the punch list. Okay. Um, a lot of them will be taken care of <clears throat> yet this week. You know, they're little things like trimming out um, entrances, a couple of gutters that need to be moved. There are there is a little bit of cement work, as you're aware. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done um, out in the parking lots as well to repair some patches that have made some grading that needs to be done on the site. So there is some work that needs to be done, but at this point, um, all but probably less than half a dozen contractors have been paid, and uh, our commitments with them have been completed. So we just have a few more. What we just learned today, uh, that Mega, they're the company that did all the precast walls, all of their work has been completed, all of their subs have been paid, all the work's been certified by the engineers and the architects and we signed off on their contracts today. So we're completing those. As you know, in the financial report, there's still funds left over. There's still a little bit of work that needs to be done. Um, some of this may take some time. Um, it could take several months before we finalize out every single contract, but we've, we've gotten pretty close. Have you had any problems with the punch list or the contractors completing work that you needed? Well. As you can imagine, sometimes uh, getting contractors to come back to a job to, to patch something in the wall uh, takes a little while. But um, no, so far everything has been working out. Good. Um, okay. It's been working out well. And certainly not as quickly as we'd like to see it done, but it is happening. No one's right. <laughs> um, we have had some nice editorials in the paper, and hopefully you've noticed those. Um, the. Uh, the predictions that were made by the consultants that you hired seem to be coming to fruition, and um, that's always good to see that um, our original ambitions are coming true. Yeah, and I just want to touch too on this uh, on the representative on the CBB board. Um, the CBB has hired a person. Convention Visitors Bureau. Yeah, Convention Visitors Bureau to um, assist in selling this too, and we just had our. Uh, uh, selling conventions and yeah, we just had our meeting on Tuesday um, with you. I will bring those reports and share those with you very extremely detailed as far as what convention that um, she's in contact with um, how many room nights where they're at as far as if they're in an RFP process um, it's, it's very detailed and even has a piece of um, uh, lost business piece of it too so as they go through and they bid on these conventions, and if they don't get a convention, they have reasons why. Some of them are just the dates don't work, you know, like they have this group of 100 or 200. Some of them have to do some type of room rentals. And, and I've told some of you guys were working on some things with the CVB, you know, possible uh, attraction funds, some different ideas on some things. So this is coming to fruition. But the gal that they have that works for them is, uh, the reports are extremely detailed, and I will get some copies of those. Um, share, share those with you guys. Okay. <clears throat> so, any questions you may have about anything that I presented? The uh, convention center didn't get put from the railroad right, at, right away, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it does not. We're very careful about that. <laughs> I can tell you, we had a number of construction meetings out there in the construction trailer when the uh, railroad would come back. You'd swear they were going to take out the side of that construction trailer. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I saw a billboard. On, uh, I was up north last week with a bunch of friends. And I was coming back on 75 north of 
um, Saginaw, they have a billboard for the convention center. Yes, I've and seen I it. Dri- I was driving yeah. like, man, that place looks great. Wow, that's our place. <laughs> 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 it's it's a very nice billboard. Yeah, they have a very nice billboard. Yeah, it's they a very a nice billboard. Where is it? Everything. It's, uh, it's north of Saginaw. It's, it's, it's north of, um, what is it, um, 47. Um, the road in the middle, you know, you come to Saginaw, if you're going north, yeah. get Saginaw, Midland, it's, it's, it's in the southbound lane uh, between Bay City and, uh, Sa- and Midland. Right there, yeah. It's the CVB pays for that, uh, $1,800 a month they spend yeah, on that. Just uh, we just had that meeting with her yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Spend that. So they're at the CVB, not just, you know, I mean, they have their salespeople, they're advertising this thing. I mean, they are, they are an exceptional partner as far as, you know, assisting and, and all the above. Good. We need to make a motion to accept this. I would move that uh, we uh, receive an, uh, the uh, administrator's report as presented. I support that. Motion to support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Miscellaneous business. Gentlemen, mm-hmm. is there anything that we haven't talked about that we want to talk about? Well, I, w- I would just like to say it's been a pleasure being back in Elginac. City Council Chambers. I've spent a lot of time in this room in the in the past, and it's very nice to see uh, some of the people that I used to work with. Brought back a lot of really nice memories. Very good. All right. Uh, receive and file. Make a motion to receive and file packets and all information presented. Support. Motion to support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I would move it. Need an adjournment. Move, we adjourn. Motion and support, and we are adjourned. Thank everybody for coming. We hope you enjoyed this week's St. Clair County Board of Commissioners meeting. Your St. Clair County Commissioners broadcast these meetings on Comcast Local Access Channel 12 every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. If you have any questions on any part of this program, please feel free to contact your St. Clair County Board of Commissioners or staff. You can find their contact information, the meeting agenda, and videos of the meetings at www.stclaircounty.org.